Hey everyone, it is a new day here. I'm getting a bright and early start here on the tutorials for the day. And let me just tell you guys, I'm a little salty because I posted a video and shared it with you guys on social media and I immediately got like three dislikes. Psh, you guys are ingrateful. All right, here's, you know, I'm still gonna produce amazing content for the few of you out there that really care. So what are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna be talking about dealing with nulls in the context of a new activity. So. First video of the day might be a little rusty, but I think I got this. All right, so here we have an intent, and part of this intent is the the data that we pass to it. So if we take a look at our, our main activity right here, what we do is we say I dot put extra. So we attach this name to the intent. So I, I gave the illustration in a previous episode. The, the intent is kind of like the suitcase we pass along to the new activity, and inside of that suitcase we have one thing with the name name and the value which comes from the value of this button here which I can show you that guys but some of the problems here is that sometimes you'll pass something to an activity and sometimes you won't so what are you supposed to do when it's null how do you deal with that but just so you guys can see what this looks like we have this reply to John we click it and it says reply to John now this button down here, I actually added that. So if you've been following along, don't worry about that. All right, but watch this. Let's say instead of assigning this to, to name, we, we just uh, comment this out. Let's say we don't pass that in. Now when we run this, what's going to happen? Because inside of our compose message activity, we are getting that value here. So this is going to be null. So yeah, that's bad. We don't want to do that, but we're going to see what happens. So we reply to John and it's empty. Now I'm going to set a breakpoint here so we can just confirm this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit this little bug button up here. And the way this will work is it'll run to this point when we click that button. So over here we have to click that button and that breakpoint will be hit. So reply to John, this is hit. Check out the value of name. It's evaluating and it's null. So it's not the value null, it's not a it's not a quoted word null. Null actually means no value. So when we're setting the text here, we're setting the text to null. We're not getting an exception, so that's interesting. It just it works, but we're not actually showing any value there. Sometimes we're going to want to do things conditionally though, so I'm going to be teaching you guys how to check for nulls. So, the very first thing we do is we say if and we can put the value in the the expression here and I'm going to stop debugging. So we say if name is null, this is a keyword here, that's how you check, then we can do something. So we would say, let's say we'll, if it's null, we're gonna do something. Otherwise, we're going to display the value. So we'll take this, cut it and paste it right here. So if it's null, we could put something else. So let's just say, We'll, we'll just say composing message. So we'll paste this in here. Instead of set text name, we'll just say composing message. And this will allow us to see how this works. And then what you can do is you can build upon this system to do more complex things based on if the value is null or not. So in this situation, it's null. And it just says composing message instead of being blank or instead of saying writing a message to John. So that's how that works. Now, this has its limitations. Um, so if we go back, obviously we don't want it to just say composing message. We want it to say composing a message to John because we clicked on John. But what if we wanted this fourth button down here that just said compose a message and we didn't have a name there and we wanted it to say something different. And maybe instead of having just the words composing message, what if we actually had a different view there, an edit text where we could type in the value? So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. One, you could you could generate that view programmatically and position that on the, the screen. That works, it might be a little bit complicated. And there's also specific views for swapping views, which you can look those up as well. But there's actually a third way, which <laughs> seems a little br brute force, but it's actually the easiest is just to toggle the visibility of different views based on whether 
a value is null or not. So what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to make it such that when you click this bottom button, it says it, it gives you the option to type in someone's name. And when you click one of these buttons, it says that person's name already. So that's what we're going to be doing. So check out the next episode and yeah, it should be pretty fun. So see you then.